Dr. Jay Katz is going to speak about what can you do to help or hurt your glaucoma. Thanks. Thank you, George, and uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for attending and staying through this afternoon. Uh, you've heard some great talks about glaucoma and all the different facets of glaucoma and what's done to treat glaucoma, but uh, when I see my patients in the office, uh, inevitably patients ask, what can I do? I know you're trying to help me, doctor, but what can I do to help myself uh, for my glaucoma? And is there anything I'm doing that might hurt uh, my glaucoma? So in the few minutes I have, I'm going to give you a, kind of a, an overview of, of different areas that I thought might interest you in terms of things that you can control uh, with your actions and your beliefs and uh, kind of furthering what Dr. Spath talked about before, about controlling your own destiny. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the things I'm going to talk about are really not totally proven yet, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done still in terms of what you can do beyond conventional therapy. Well, the simplest thing is that if you're already being treated by your physician for glaucoma and you believe in the treatment, then you really have to follow through on that treatment. In other words, if you're asked to take medications, uh, then you have to take them regularly, and we'll talk about that in a moment. A lot of people ask about things that pertain to general health, whether it's exercise, weight loss, eating properly, uh, supplementing with things like um, fish oil, and also there are treatments for other conditions like cholesterol-lowering agents, which help you in uh, in terms of atherosclerosis and strokes and uh, risk for heart attacks, does that help me for my glaucoma as well? Uh, the sad reality out there is that we know from a number of studies um, that many glaucoma patients, uh, amazingly, don't take their medications as prescribed. And in fact, uh, the estimate out there right now currently is that 50% of patients get worse simply because they don't take their medication on schedule as prescribed. Now, there are many reasons for that. Could be cost issues, could be forgetting, uh, not putting the medication in properly, side effects from medications, but this is something that needs to be addressed with your physicians. And unfortunately, we know that a lot of times patients are much better about taking their medications the day they see their physician, so the physician is kind of fool a little bit, and the patient is fooling themselves a little bit and having a better reading that particular day when they take their medications when they're not taking their medications the rest of the time. So this uh, involves some collaboration between the physician and the patient and making sure that you're able to afford, you're able to tolerate, you're able to remember on a simple schedule the medications that are used for treatment. Um, Obviously, we also have to identify everybody that has glaucoma, starting there, like doing screening here today. Again, it's estimated that 50% of patients uh, with glaucoma in this country don't know they have glaucoma because they've yet to be diagnosed. So you have to be diagnosed by getting regular exams. Well, let's, let's talk about exercise and being overweight. Uh, I think there's a pretty strong set of studies out there that show that overall, if people exercise regularly, their eye pressures are lower. Uh, does it cure glaucoma? No. Just like medications don't cure glaucoma, you can just help control it. And uh, by exercising regularly, and the studies to date that have been done, meaning that you have to do 20 minutes of good cardiovascular exercise three to four times a week, and it varies as to what that means for each individual patient. Somebody can go out and run, you know, eight miles, another person walks on a treadmill for that period of time. But that seems to lower the pressure overall, not for every patient, but overall, on average, it lowers the pressure of several points. Um, there is increasing information that being overweight um, um, and usually meaning way overweight, being truly obese, seems to perhaps raise the eye pressure but also make you more susceptible to damage from whatever eye pressure um, you have. 
So losing weight and exercising, that really does seem to benefit all of you. What about what you eat? Um, again, uh, if you have a good diet that's rich in vegetables, that seems to reduce the risk of having glaucoma. There is a study done by Dr. Coleman out on the West Coast in Los Angeles looking at over 1,000 women, uh, again, looking at very carefully their diets over an extended period of time and trying to correlate that with risk of various types of eye disease. Well, there seems to be a drop in the rate of glaucoma development if you eat a lot of vegetables. That seemed to be the conclusion from that study. There's a lot of interest now in looking at the different types of fatty acids and their role in disease in the body, whether it's uh, having heart attacks and strokes, joint disease, and also with glaucoma. And uh, this is a complex area, to looking at uh, the different types of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. And it may not be just the actual amount, but the ratios between the fatty acids that may be very important in the development of glaucoma. But by and large, it appears that kind of the fish oils appear to be ha have some beneficial protective effect against glaucoma damage and may, in fact, lower eye pressure. And this is something that needs to be studied, again, more clearly in the future. Statins, uh, drugs that lower the cholesterol level, are being used more and more uh, in society you know, because they really work in cutting down the risk of having serious cardiovascular disease, having strokes and uh, heart attacks. Uh, well, recently there's been a, a, a nice study done looking at patients on statins versus those that are not on statins, and there appears to be a beneficial effect against having glaucoma or glaucoma damage by being on these statins. And they may have nothing to do with pressure, interestingly. We know that pressure is a very important component of glaucoma, but these may work more on the side of the circulation. So if you improve the circulation to the eye, this may protect against the pressure-dependent damage. Well, there, there are some things that are even more cloudy, and we're asked quite a bit about these kind of other areas that have even less information or scientific information about them. You might sometimes can purchase something like uh, what you see on here, something called Glaucoma Shield, and I'm just picking on this one, but there are probably hundreds of these products out there, and they even say glaucoma on there, uh, implying that it can help you. Uh, well, when you're talking about vitamins, uh, in particular vitamin C and E have been touted for use in glaucoma, ginkgo, uh, herb, uh, bilberry, uh, these are totally unregulated by the Food and Drug Administration. So they can put a label on there and say this is wonderful for glaucoma with absolutely no evidence for it. It's not regulated in any way. So when you have vitamin supplements and herbal supplements, they're really unregulated, and they can make sometimes uh, outlandish claims. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It's just that we don't have strong evidence that it works. And in particular, vitamin C and E antioxidants, there's a lot of experimental evidence to suggest they might help, but to date there's nothing to show that it really helps glaucoma patients. Similarly, ginkgo biloba has been used uh, for a lot of health conditions, and it's also been investigated for use in glaucoma. In the laboratory, interesting effects on tissues, blood circulation, but really there's been no evidence that it helps definitely our glaucoma patients. doesn't mean it shouldn't be used. It's relatively safe. It perhaps makes you bleed a little bit more easily, so you have to be careful there. But uh, if there's something theoretical and you're desperate and conventional therapy is not working, I wouldn't blame anybody for dry, trying something like supplements, including vitamins and ginkgo and bilberry. Bilberry, as you uh, may see in a lot of the literature, has been used to kind of support better vision, uh, more uh, protection against glaucoma. And again, bilberry, nothing scientifically valid there. It's all really theoretical. Even drugs that are used for uh, neurodegenerative conditions like dementia and Alzheimer's, like memantine, uh, 
we thought that would help glaucoma, and we did a large trial going over four years with 2,000 plus patients, and unfortunately it didn't seem to benefit the way that study was done, our glaucoma population. It doesn't mean it definitely doesn't work. The way the study was designed didn't show that it really had any value, and that's the reason we don't prescribe it for glaucoma patients in our country. What about some things that may help me? Uh, the category of marijuana comes up all the time. That's one of the favorite questions I get asked. And this actually does uh, have some validity, and there's some scientific merit there, in that smoking marijuana really does lower eye pressure in about two out of three patients. The problem is it doesn't last very long, so you have to smoke every two hours to maintain the effect. <laughs> And maybe that's one reason our ex-governor of California there on the bottom might have run into recent problems is because he caught himself here being photographed years ago smoking a joint. So pills and drops, uh, cannabinoids that have been developed as uh, pills and eye drops unfortunately haven't been successful thus far in kind of getting the same effect as smoking marijuana. We haven't given up there, and there's still more work that's being done. Well, what about things that might be harmful in what you do? And uh, there's some really good questions on the part of a lot of patients saying, listen, I do things like yoga. Uh, I play the trumpet. I drink coffee. I smoke. Uh, I take other drugs. Can these other drugs bother me in some way for my glaucoma? Well, listen, yoga is a wonderful thing, and uh, I would encourage everybody to have some form of exercise, including yoga, if you enjoy that. But uh, the upside-down position, which some people do practice for extended period of times, meaning 20, 30 minutes sometimes, has been shown very clearly to raise the eye pressure and probably is not a good idea but with somebody that has glaucoma and certainly significantly advanced glaucoma. So whether it's yoga upside down or gravity inversion boots or devices that kind of help your spine by keeping you upside down, those probably should be avoided. Um, wind instruments, uh, Dr. Schumann, who uh, is at Pittsburgh now, did a very nice study showing that blowing into a wind instrument for an extended period can really raise the eye pressure quite a bit. So it doesn't mean that you can't play your wind instrument, it's just that you probably should do it in moderation. Um, drinking water and various uh, beverages and smoking come up a lot, too. If you do a fad diet, which requires large volumes of water, like eight f large glasses one after another, uh, that's a test that used to be used in glaucoma, actually, years ago, the water provocative test or challenge. We know that that can raise eye pressure in certain susceptible patients. So you have to be careful about forced volume drinking. It doesn't mean you shouldn't drink water. You just shouldn't overdo it. Coffee, four, more than four cups of coffee a day have been associated uh, with some elevation of pressure in certain patients. Uh, and that may be due to the volume. It may be due to the caffeine. We really don't know. And then uh, smoking. Uh, I wish I could tell you that definitely smoking is bad for glaucoma. I can't quite tell you that. But we know that nicotine may have some bad effect on the circulation, which may make you more susceptible to glaucoma injury. Uh, so I would avoid smoking, not simply because of glaucoma, but in terms of general health considerations. Now, there are other drugs that are used for systemic issues that may have some impact on your glaucoma. There are oral medications, uh, even over-the-counter, like for hay fever, colds, that may dilate your pupil. And if you have a so-called narrow angle, where there's a very small opening where the fluid flows into your outflow drainage area that your doctor would tell you about, that may be overwhelmed by using an oral drug that could potentially dilate your pupil. So it's good to ask your doctor if you have a narrow angle, what about drugs that I should avoid orally or be careful with for my narrow angle? Now, if you've had a laser iridotomy like you heard about earlier today that corrects the narrow angle, then it's not a concern. 
Well, if you have an open angle glaucoma, should I worry about any of the drugs that I take orally? Well, prednisone is the one that you should be very careful with. It doesn't mean that you can't take it, but you should alert your ophthalmologist that you're about to start an oral course of prednisone for rheumatoid arthritis or, or some other systemic problem. Because this seems to clog up the open angle and lead to pressure elevation. Well, blood flow and glaucoma are very, very connected, and there are drugs that might affect circulation in the back of the eye. There are drugs that are used for erectile dysfunction, um, Viagra, Cialis, and there are people that have these kind of sudden losses of vision. It's really very abrupt. Uh, and where it's not clear of the association with glaucoma, but some of us are concerned that there might be a higher chance. But again, when you're looking at the odds, like Dr. Myers went through earlier with you, the odds of getting a problem are so small that I wouldn't tell somebody not to use it. But if, certainly if you have gray outs of vision, you should tell your doctor and hold off on using the medication until you have that investigated further. Also, with blood pressure medication, if you do too good a job in lowering the blood pressure, especially when we're asleep at night when a lot of our blood pressures really dip down low, uh, that could probably make you more susceptible, again, to glaucoma injury. So you want to be careful about, yes, you want your blood pressure just right, you don't want it too low, and you certainly don't want it too high. <coughs> so. Uh, in summary, uh, what I can tell you with uh, in just good common sense, take your medications. You certainly have control over that. If you can't take your medications, at least tell your doctor why you can't take your medications. Uh, do all the good health steps, exercise, maintain ideal body weight, have a good diet rich in vegetables and fruit, take care of your cholesterol. If you need medication for it, take it. Uh, there are certain things that make sense, but we have little proof that they help, including v vitamins and herbal therapy. If they're relatively uh, modest doses and herbs that are relatively safe, like ginkgo, again, uh, I wouldn't discourage you from using it. In certain situations, I would encourage perhaps people to use them. Um, and then, of course, avo avoid things that may be potentially harmful. Don't uh, overload on fluids excessively. Uh, be careful with your caffeine intake. Uh, avoid smoking, and, and also monitor your blood pressure carefully and make sure that you're adequately controlled but not uh, over controlled. And then finally, I've, in, I've had a couple of pictures here of uh, clips from um, a movie from years ago called Sleeper that Woody Allen did before he became strange. And, um, <laughs> and I, you know, there's a, there's a great line in the movie there. It's a story about a guy who ran a health food store. That was Woody Allen. And he developed some incurable illness, and he had himself frozen cryogenically. And then 100 years later, he's being unwrapped, and he's walking around, and the doctors are just kind of, you know, shaking their heads because he's such a poor physical specimen. And one of the young women physicians was looking at him and, and, and asked the other more senior doctors, were they aware of the benefits of high doses of ice cream and fried foods back then? Because this gentleman looks like he could really use it. And uh, again, today we, we have so much to learn about what are the right things to do outside of conventional therapy. Uh, but I think we're making inroads and Perhaps I'll have at the next update for you even more information perhaps about what you can do to help yourselves. Thank you.